Coming up, Franklin Graham shares the true cost of Christmas. There is a price to be paid. A struggle to find hope takes its toll. It was messy. It was hard. It was anything but easy for me. Christ came at a great cost to save them from their sins. Next, amidst devastation, can priceless hope be found? After Hurricane Dorian, so many of these people have been affected. 60% of the houses are gone. Chaplains have arrived in the Bahamas. And there's a cost to taking the gospel. In today's culture, it takes boldness to stand for Christ. I'm going to give you an opportunity to do something here tonight. Take a bold stand for the Lord Jesus Christ this Christmas. It all starts right now. Have you ever thought about the, the cost of Christmas? Well, I guess all of us have to some degree, especially January and February when the credit card statements come in, but there is a, a cost. And when you think about the first Christmas, think about uh, the cost, God sending his son from heaven to this earth where the Lord Jesus Christ gave up his throne in heaven to come into this earth to, to be a child born of a virgin to be raised in a family in Nazareth, the cost, the price of that. And then you think about the cost just to the mother, to Mary, the pain, the suffering that she went through to bring the child into the world. When you think of the first Christmas and you think of what Jesus gave up, uh, he came from heaven and he came to this earth and he came into poverty. And he had a very difficult life, very difficult struggle. And the Bible says that he was despised and rejected. Now think about that. Uh, he wasn't a person where everybody came and patted him on the back. He, he was despised and he was rejected by men, a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. So our Lord Jesus, when he came from heaven to this earth, uh, there was a price, a big price. But God gave his son willingly, sent him to this earth on a rescue mission. Jesus created all things and possessed all power and authority in heaven. And if you had all power and authority, how would you use it? You know, the scripture says in Philippians uh, chapter 2, verse 7 and 8, he made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in the appearance of a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death at the cross. This Christmas, consider God's great love shown by the great price he paid to redeem you. And I want you to see a story of how Christ's great sacrifice brought hope to a hopeless situation. Christmas was not anything I ever looked forward to because it represented everything I didn't have. I didn't have joy, I didn't have family. So it was really a, a holiday that I just wanted to get over. I had a fear of getting close to people because I knew that if you saw me for who I was, you wouldn't accept me, you wouldn't like me. I believed in God, but I didn't, I didn't know a personal relationship was possible. Very early on, I had a feeling that I wasn't fitting in. I didn't know what was missing in my life, so I sought the best jobs. I went after the relationships. I would use alcohol, I would use food, I would use drugs. I used whatever I could to dull the pain I didn't want to feel. I was running from me. I was alone. I had reached a bottom. I didn't know where else to go. I was desperately wanting connection. I had no idea how to go about it.
There was a turning point in my life. I had this sense that something was calling me. I didn't know what that meant at the time, but I knew that I was feeling very vulnerable. So as I began the tour, I was hearing things I had never heard before. We believe that there are many people here tonight that have hungry hearts. You can find everything that you've been searching for in Christ. The words pierced my heart. It became personal that day. I'm accepting this as your word by faith. You're away from God. You're the one lost sheep. And he's looking for you tonight. It was so clear. As the invitation was given at the end, I knew this was my opportunity to change, to lay the past down, to walk forward, and to say yes. I accepted Christ on that day. What I found was this amazing family. They would love on me, they would put their arms around me, I would cry. I learned how to become a friend. They taught me how to live, they taught me what to do next. It was amazing. My favorite things about Christmas is serving at the Billy Graham Library. It's a month-long celebration that inspires people. A time that I just couldn't wait to get over is now full of life and celebration and family, what I have always wanted in my life. To not have that emptiness inside and know that I am a loving child of God, that He knows me personally and I know Him personally, that is absolutely what I have been searching for my entire life. Every day at the library, the gospel is changing lives. You see, the library is not just a library. What it is, it's, it's an ongoing crusade. People come from miles around to visit the Billy Graham Library at Christmas. It's not about Billy Graham, but it's about the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, who came out of heaven to this earth to take our sins. Every day, people are coming to faith in Christ. You know, you can be a partner with us at the Billy Graham Library. We need your prayers. But we also need your financial support. You see, we don't charge anything for a visit to the library. We want it to be free for everyone. But we do have costs to keep the library open and functioning every day with the people that are there to proclaim the gospel, share the gospel. We need your help. So please be a part of this. It's a great opportunity for you to be involved as a partner with the Billy Graham Library. Support this ongoing work of the Billy Graham Library with your prayers and financial help. Visit BillyGram.tv and click Give or call 877-567-8989. As a thank you for your support, we'll send you the devotional book, Redeemed, by Billy Graham's grandson, Will Graham. During this season of generosity, partner with us as we continue to share the good news of the gospel. Call 877-567-8989 or go to BillyGram.tv. Coming up, heart-wrenching destruction in the Bahamas as chaplains respond. I try to be strong. I'm just right there holding on. People ask me why I come to disaster, and I say because I get to see the goodness of God. And later, what's driving Franklin Graham and the Decision America Tour? My prayer is that God will use His church. I know that many churches have been praying for revival. And I think, whew, we're gonna cry. <laughs> this is the time. The only hope for our nation is Almighty God. And the most important thing that we can do is to pray. We need to take a stand. And it all begins with you.
When we remember Christmas and the price that was paid for our salvation, uh, we've got a great opportunity to share this wonderful gift with others. That's our family, our friends, our neighbors. And you know what? All of us have a responsibility to share this wonderful story with everyone. You know, Christmas is about love. It's about God's love, God sending His Son. And the Bible says that Christ's love compels us because we're convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. Christ came for a reason at Christmas. He was born in a manger, but He died on a cross. He shed His blood on that cross for each and every one. When we remember the cost that Christ paid, we should remember that we have a responsibility to share this wonderful gift that God loves us and that Christ died for our sins. And then we can share this gift with our friends and our family and neighbors. It's the greatest gift of all. So please share with your friends and family this year. Good morning. Extended coverage begins on Hurricane Dorian as we track its potential impact in the Bahamas. Among the deadliest threats of this hurricane is the powerful storm surge that could be coming. It's a record breaker, Tom. I mean, this is the strongest landfall and hurricane in this part of the world since 1935. This thing has slowed down significantly. Uh, unfortunately for the folks in the Bahamas, you're going to get hit for the next 24 hours with hurricane force winds. I would say about 60% of the houses gone. You know, I mean, they just washed off the foundation. It's only the foundation sitting there. Everything just washed out to the sea. Everybody right now is grieving, you know. I was praying and, and crying for my fellow brothers and sisters who didn't really stand a chance. And we still have so much people here that's not accounted for. My mother's sister, she said she's going to stay at home with her and her husband. And her daughter, and on Monday, we, we tried to call up with no answer. One of the family members went there to check the house, but the house is not standing there anymore. Chaplains from the Rapid Response Team at Billy Graham Evangelistic Association have arrived in Freeport, in Bahamas, to um, go into some of these broken communities and begin to show the light and the love of Christ. They've lost everything. And I think as chaplains, our role is to point them to Jesus, that there is hope, that God does love them, and that His promises are true. There's a resilience in the Bahamian people which is remarkable, um, but many of them don't know what today or tomorrow holds for them. And so we're here to listen to their stories and to reassure them that there is hope in Jesus. So far what I've seen, definitely the, the chaplains are needed here because a lot of these people are still hurting. And the devastation here is pretty tough to come and see. I can't even imagine the people that were here the night of the storm. I was underwater. I was underwater. I couldn't see that. The water's way up. But I try to be strong and pretend like that now, which is hard to do. Yes. Yeah. I'm just right there holding on. I was like trying to figure out if I could get back down to really save my brother because that was all on my mind. And, but that, that current was too, so strong and the breeze was so strong, like, you know, and he, he, didn't, he didn't make it. You know, like, I feel like I should have died too. I mean, I, I just hoping I don't have to be carrying that burden in my mind. All around us, you see a lot of brokenness, a lot of pain, a lot of loss. Um, people have lost loved ones, 
And so we're seeing all of this and um, being always mindful that it's hope in Christ. And even through the devastation that's all around us, He can restore a person's life and give them hope again beyond the moment that we're experiencing today. This is an emergency field hospital and it's just made available to the community after Hurricane Dorian. So many of these people have been affected deeply by the hurricane. Many of them have lost everything. People ask me why I come to disaster. And I say because I get to see the goodness of God. My role as a chaplain is to be present. I just try to be led by the Spirit. I just say, here I am, Lord, use me. Yesterday, I was just making a routine walk through the women's ward, and her eyes caught my eyes as we went through there. She came up to me, she stood and she talked with me. Somehow the conversation turned to who Jesus was. She told me Jesus loves me. He promised never to leave me, never to forsake me. No sin is too great that he can't forgive. I shared with her that Jesus' blood was sufficient. It was sufficient for the whole world. And he wants to have a relationship. This morning, I accept the Lord as my personal Savior. I ask him to take control of my life and lead the way. I wept, I cried. You know what I mean? It was, it was a joy to see. Oh. I think we're called to be witnesses. And I'm a witness to what I know of God, and I can say He really does bring beauty from ashes. We've been commissioned by Christ to go into all the world and preach the gospel to people that are in a broken time in life. We want to show those individuals that Christ can cause anyone's life to be restored. You can support the Billy Graham Rapid Response Team and provide ministry to the devastated and hurting. Partner with us in this outreach that continues to change so many lives. Visit BillyGraham.tv or call 877-567-8989. Share the hope of Christ this Christmas and get involved now. Next. Franklin Graham raises questions on the Decision America Tour. People will come to the meetings searching, but they don't even know what they're searching for. Are you lost tonight? But for some, the message sparks conflict. I just walked out here at the pavilion and I saw the protesters. We're going in to see Franklin Graham preach against us. Would you welcome, please, evangelist, author, Billy educator, Graham. Billy Graham. He was uh, unparalleled in my judgment. Never give in! He's been an inspiration. He's been a friend. The presidents reached out to him because they wanted what he had. He was a giant. You won't see his likes again. Jesus said, if any man desires to come after me, let him deny himself daily and follow me. There is a price. Jesus is saying, there is a price to follow him. Today in this country, you can be scorned. People will mock you, make fun of you. And there'll even be people who will come after you and want to try to put you out of business or whatever they can do. It's just a fact of life, but it's a time for us to take a stand. We shouldn't be surprised at the cost or the price for following Christ and the hatred that can follow. You see, Jesus warned us in the scriptures. Jesus said in John 15, he said, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. There is a price, no question. We know that there will be persecution. We know there'll be difficulties. There's gonna be struggles. Jesus struggled and he struggled for your salvation when he died on that cross. 
He expects us to take a stand. So will you do that? Take a stand, a bold stand for the Lord Jesus Christ this Christmas. What's his name again? David. David. What's the giant soldier's name again? David. Goliath. Goliath. In today's culture, it takes boldness to stand for Christ. I always tell my daughter, be strong and courageous. And the best way to exemplify that to her is to stand for our faith. The Lord has called our nation to return back to Him. I know that many churches have been praying for revival. And I know that Decision America is going to be an impactful, useful instrument to make that happen. Thank you. Wow. Thank you all for coming. The Decision America Tour is a national campaign to go community by community, state by state, to reach the whole country for Christ. The Decision America Tour is life changing. I believe that this will be a catalyst moment for the entire nation where Jesus will be shed from seashore to seashore. We're not coming to preach religion. We're coming to tell people how they can have a relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ. We ask churches to come together, hold hands, and let's pray for our nation. And then I give a message, and that message is always the gospel. You see, Jesus said, I've come to seek and to save that which was lost. Are you lost tonight? Well, Jesus has come to seek and to save you. I believe God has called me to this tour. We know that there are people that oppose what we're doing. Jesus said, uh, if they hate you, they hated me first. So it shouldn't surprise us. The so Civic Center property you're on public comes property, up to right here. You're not blocking any, any right of way. Your job is to harass us and make it really hard to do this. We've seen protesters come out to these events before. I just want to invite you. Which no, news? I'm 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 I, don't, I don't have to kneel before any guy. You know, when I look at the group over there, my heart was broken. That they don't know God's love. And right across the street, they'll hear the greatest love story that will break every chain, that will remove every bondage. And it's right there across the street. He wants to set you free. That's why Christ came. He'll have mercy on you here tonight. He wants to cleanse you. He wants to forgive you. People are searching. Something is missing and they can't quite put their finger on it. My prayer is that God will use His church to be a light to this nation and that that light will draw many, many people to faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. So help us, Lord, to represent you today. That we be an we example really to have this hunger protection. for people to know the Lord. And with Franklin Graham bringing Decision America, we just jumped in and we want to be part of it. I'm going to be a prayer counselor at uh, Decision in America. I'm going to be there supporting. I'm also going to be there praying, asking the Holy Spirit to draw the people to understand, to open their heart so that they can receive Jesus. We've been praying for many years, and I think, whoo, I'm going to cry. <laughs> this is the time. My goal is to see salvation. I've been praying the Decision America is going to go across the country every event and proclaim the good news because it's a desperately needed of, a, of the gospel. People will come to the meetings searching, but they don't even know what they're searching for. They'll just come. Whatever reason, we just rejoice and we're thankful that thousands come and I'm able to present the truth of God's Word And the Bible tells us that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. I'm here to tell you 
that God loves you. He sent his son from heaven on a rescue mission to take your sins. He took our sins to a cross and he died and shed his blood on that cross for you and for me. On the third day, God raised him to life. Jesus Christ is not dead. He's here tonight. And if you're willing to repent, to turn from your sins and by faith, invite Jesus Christ into your heart, into your life tonight, God will forgive your sins tonight. If you've never invited Christ into your heart, into your life, if you're not sure tonight, if you're forgiven, you stand right now. Just stand. It was amazing. I saw people from all walks of life receiving Christ. It was really moving. Franklin, God let his words, because I might have been the one person he was meant to talk to tonight. I know now that I'm back on the right track. For me, it was very emotional. Two little girl gave their life to the Lord. They were like nine and 10. It's amazing to see the response when you hear the gospel so clear. I, as a counselor, went to a little girl, and she accepted Jesus as her personal savior, and I was just thrilled. It's like a cleanse. It's like being set free. All that weight was just lifted off me. All that guilt, all that shame. I raised my hand, felt no shame, no sorrow, just felt free. Decision America Tour is about souls. It's an experience that you cannot explain in words, but you will never forget. The Billy Graham Evangelistic Association is all about taking the gospel, this good news that God loves sinners to the end of the earth, that Christ died for our sins, that he rose from the grave, he's alive, and he can come into each and every heart that is willing to trust him by faith. And we're gonna to continue to do this as long as God gives us the health and strength. America needs prayer, America needs God, and we have turned our back on him. So please, pray with us. We need your help and we need your prayers. Thank you. Reach America with the good news. Stand with Franklin Graham as he takes the gospel to key cities across the country next year. Your prayers and financial support are crucial. Visit BillyGraham.tv and click Give or call 877-567-8989. As a special thank you, we'll send you the devotional book, Redeemed by Billy Graham's grandson, Will Graham. During this season of generosity, partner with us. Call now or go to BillyGraham.tv. I want to wish each and every one of you a very Merry Christmas.